Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, and at long last, Season 1 for Modern Warfare is finally upon us. There is a metric ton of stuff to go over, so this video will likely be much longer than normal, so hopefully you guys will all sit back, relax, and enjoy, and to kick things off here, let's talk about the Seasonal Reset. If you may have passed level 55 before today, when you sign in, you're going to find yourself back at rank 55. This is because each season, your officer ranks will reset, and just like last time, there will be 100 new challenges for you to complete, with each challenge unlocking with each new level. I think I speak for everybody when I say that the rewards for completing these challenges during Season 0, I think they're calling it, they were pretty lackluster, right? After you hit level 155, the challenges seemed pretty pointless because they basically just gave you experience that you could no longer use, so I suppose we'll have to wait and see if Infinity Ward has any tricks up their sleeves this season to get fans more interested in the officer rank system. I will say I do like leveling up again, and I do think the system has a lot of potential, but because it replaced something as time honored as the prestige system, I feel like a revamp of some kind to get fans excited to do all the challenges is definitely in order, but I suppose time will tell, we'll have to wait and see how things are going to play out. Next up, let's talk about the new content. It turns out that this image right here, which of course I made a video on, was a bit misleading on the part of Infinity Ward. It seemed like all this content was going to be released right away as soon as the update went live, but it turns out they're going to be drip feeding us this content over the course of the season. Right now, Crash is the only 6v6 map that has been added, and we also have a few new gunfight maps, and I believe the new ground war map is also in the game, but it looks like we're going to have to wait a week or two before Vacant and Shipment are added to the game. The new weapons, however, are here, and since they're tied to the Battle Pass, let's go ahead and discuss that next. It looks like the Battle Pass and the in-game store are now live, and they are going to be the monetization model for Modern Warfare this year. The Battle Pass has two aspects to it. There's going to be the free part, and then there's going to be the premium part. Overall, there are 100 total tiers, and over 20 of them appear to be free. As you guys can see, there are certain lock sections, and then there's going to be free sections. How this appears to work is, if you choose to not buy the Battle Pass, you're still going to be leveling up through it regardless. And the reason why they're doing this is because once you get to tier 75 or so, and you're not really getting all that much, you may feel pressured into actually purchasing the Battle Pass, and if you do that, then all the content you unlocked will be instantly given to you. But also, while you're leveling through this, you're going to be hitting free tiers, and everybody will be unlocking those particular rewards when they get to that point. When it comes to free content, we have the Holger 26 light machine gun, we have the Ram 7 submachine gun, we have three weapon blueprints, four emblems, three weapon charms, three calling cards, three sprays, three stickers, and 300. COD points. Like I said, the rest of the Battle Pass is what they refer to as premium content. There are tons of operator skins and weapon blueprints and XP tokens and calling cards and things like that, but even though you're going to be leveling through it, unless you decide to purchase the Battle Pass, you won't actually get that content. And the Battle Pass itself costs 1,000 COD points, which translates out to about 10 American dollars. Now the big question right now, I'm sure, is how will this system hold up over time? In my own personal opinion, and I would love to hear what you guys think down in the comments, this is by far the best system we've had in recent memory, right? Not counting Infinite Warfare, the Infinite Warfare system was really good, but if you look at Advanced Warfare, Black Ops 3, Black Ops 4, World War 2, all those other games, this is a much better system in my opinion, because in terms of post-launch content, DLC maps are free and they're being periodically added throughout the year. On top of that, they're also being delivered to everybody on every platform at the same time. Time when previously, that was one of the huge monetization models for the Call of Duty franchise. Back in the day, they would charge us for map packs, and then they would take another check from Microsoft or Sony to release those paid maps on a specific platform before anywhere else, but this time around, neither of those two things are happening. On top of that, we also have the free weapon model. Now, obviously, we have to earn them by playing the game a ton, but we still get to earn them, right? They're still earnable and free for everybody, which is something that we've wanted in the Call of Duty franchise for years now. I think the big catch, however, with this Battle Pass system is what is going to happen to the Holger 26 and the Ram 7 
Once this battle pass is over, we only have 28 days to complete it, and while yes, the weapons are technically free, what does that mean for the people who are not going to be able to finish the battle pass on time, or for the people who did not even own the game when the battle pass was active? If history is any indicator, then it's likely that these weapons are going to be thrown into the store, which as you guys can see, right now there's a bunch of cosmetic items that can be purchased in the store, but if these weapons do end up behind a paywall, then the system is really no different than what we've seen in previous years, because for the people that weren't able to complete the pass on time, or the people that weren't around when the pass was active, there will be weapons in the store that they cannot unlock unless they spend extra money, which would definitely be a horrible thing. But once again, I should mention this is a theory as of right now, Infinity Ward and Activision have not said one way or the other, so I suppose we'll have to wait and see what happens to these weapons after this battle pass goes away. I have seen some people suggesting that since we can earn COD points via the battle pass, that players could just simply use those points to buy guns at a later date, but I really don't think that's a viable option with what we know so far. If you buy the battle pass for 1000 COD points, you're set to earn something like 1300 COD points back if you make it through all 100 tiers in time. Looking at the store, these bundles are way more expensive than that, so hypothetically in the future, if somebody completes a separate battle pass and gets 1300 COD points back, and then they go to the store and they want to buy these weapons that were from a previous battle pass, those weapons would have to be pretty freaking cheap, right? It really doesn't look like that's going to be the case. And even then, you would still have to buy the premium battle pass in the future to be able to unlock those COD points to be able to buy those weapons. So you're still paying money either way. Remember that the free battle pass only awards you 300 COD points for completion. So if you're doing that in the future, if like we're in a future battle pass and you go through, you get all your free tiers and you get your 300 COD points, weapons from previous battle passes in the store would have to only be 150 COD points points each if fans are actually going to be able to buy them with COD points that they got for playing the game. So that all seems very convoluted and also seems very unlikely to me. So I suppose we'll have to wait and see how things are going to play out. I should say it is possible that these weapons could be added as mission challenges once the season is over, which would mean fans would just have to complete challenges to unlock the weapons themselves or maybe a blueprint variant of the weapons. But again, time will tell, guys. As of right now, we really have no idea what is going to happen. Infinity Ward and Activision are being completely silent on the matter. I will say though, to kind of wrap this up, as far as a monetization model goes in a modern day video game, I like what we have here with Modern Warfare quite a bit. I know that there is a huge stigma when it comes to full priced games having in game purchases, but when it comes to actual tangible content, all the big stuff is free. Right, free maps, free guns, a steady stream of new game modes, and we even have some free variants and calling cards and stuff like that going on for going through the battle pass that we don't even have to purchase. The big question right now for me is how will this system evolve over time? Will it get better or will it get worse? Because history suggests that it's going to go downhill after the holiday season, but I suppose we'll have to wait and see. But right now, I feel as though this is a step in the right direction for the Call of Duty franchise. I just hope that Infinity Ward stops burying their heads in the sand when it comes to big updates and overhaul. Because recently, if you guys haven't heard this, Joe Seacott claimed that the overhaul leak was just made up for attention. And when a bunch of big YouTubers were flown out to record early footage of Season 1, Infinity Ward told them at their studio that they have no plans to change the minimap back to normal. On top of that, they're not really planning on adding Dead Silence as a perk, which is one of the most highly requested changes to the game. And they're also not really talking about skill-based matchmaking whatsoever, which is obviously the biggest topic in the community right now. They say that matchmaking is different in every single game. This is not the same matchmaking that we saw back in Infinite Warfare or even games like Modern Warfare 3 or Modern Warfare 2. It's something kind of unique to this year's Modern Warfare game. And they say they can't really talk about it, which just seems to confirm the skill-based matchmaking is in the game and a lot of people don't want it to be there. That's obviously a big problem with the community right now. So there's a lot going on here with Modern Warfare, man. There really is. And keep in mind... The Battle Royale mode is said to be coming in early 2020. We still haven't heard anything really official from anyone at Infinity Ward or Activision about that yet, but apparently that's also going to be coming. And we still have the rest of Season 1. Season 1 is going to be lasting about 60 days, give or take, and during that time, they're going to be adding a lot of content to the game. But will it be enough? Will it be enough to kind of revitalize the community? Will this new monetization system be good for the community long term? Is this going to be something that fans embrace and enjoy, or is this going to be another thing that the community just hates about Call of Duty that is going to further push more people away? As of right now, we really don't know. It's really hard to tell, but I would love to know down in the comments 
What do you guys think about all this? What do you think of season one? What do you think about Finney Ward refusing to make changes that the community really wants him to make? And what do you think of the new Battle Pass system? And do you think this is going to be good for the Call of Duty franchise? If there's one thing that's for sure, it's that it's going to be a very interesting couple of months ahead for the Call of Duty community. And as always, I will be with you guys every step of the way. But for right now, I'm going to wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please drop me a rating. Thank you all so much for listening. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.